I go to Disney World every single week, and these are my favorite things in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Molly's Favorite Things. I'm lucky enough to visit the Disney and Universal parks every single week for work, so I have accrued a lot of opinions and a lot of favorites. Some of them are big heavy hitters that you've all been on before. Some of them are lesser known eats or lesser known attractions. So we're gonna go land by land and pick my favorite thing in each one, share some fun along the way here at Hollywood Studios. Let's get to it. Now the way this works, if you've never seen an episode of this series before, or a little refresher, is that I have picked one thing in every single land. And there are eight distinct lands here in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Why did I do it this way? Because I'm competitive and I make everything a game. It would be way too easy just to make a list of my top eight favorite things in Hollywood Studios. It adds a little bit of weight to it when I have to pick one thing in each land. Now some lands are very easy to choose. There's a clear winner for me. However, some lands are a little trickier to narrow it down. There's some lands with multiple heavy hitter attractions, great dining, and spectacular shows. And then there's lands where there's not much of anything, and picking anything as a favorite is a struggle. No, commissary lane, I'm not talking about you. Why would I be talking about you? Um, anyway, I poured over a map in this very real video of me definitely choosing the things in that moment. I don't look at my pen, I'm not left-handed ignore that and let's get on with the show. Now some of you may be expecting me to start this video with Hollywood Boulevard which would make logical sense. That's the entryway into the park where you've got all the shopping, some dining, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. But I have plans for a specific thing on Hollywood Boulevard and a specific time to be there. So we're gonna skip that for now and move straight into Echo Lake. Now Echo Lake is kind of a weird land. There's probably a lot more in this land than you first realized. For starters, two of the main sit-down restaurants in Hollywood Studios are here, Hollywood and Vine, a character dining buffet, as well as 50's Primetime Cafe, the show that puts you in a 1950s sitcom where your cousins are your waiters and they yell at you and your elbows are on the table and to finish your plate. I actually love 50's Primetime Cafe, specifically that fried cheese appetizer and the peanut butter and jelly milkshake. So that did make my short list of things to choose in Echo Lake. Also in Echo Lake, you've got Min and Bill's Dockside Diner, which is a quick service food location that I still haven't forgiven for getting rid of the chicken Caesar salad sandwich that they had on it over a decade ago. You've also got Gertie the Dinosaur, which is a, an ice cream shop, but mostly I like it because Gertie is an icon. You've got epic, pun intended, shows here in Echo Lake like the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular. You've got Epic Eats where you can get amazing funnel cakes. Backlot Express is here in Echo Lake. This is a very large quick service restaurant that serves kind of your classic theme park foods like burgers and chicken nuggets. But for me, they have one of my favorite desserts in this park, the Oatmeal Cream Pie Wookie Cookie. Mickey and Minnie's uh, Vacation Fun Original Short is here. That's definitely out because Goofy's not wearing any pants. You've got, for the first time in forever, a Frozen Sing-Along Spectacular, which is a low-key, very underrated sing-along show with Frozen characters. This is also where you can meet everybody's favorite snowman, Olaf. He has a permanent meet and greet here that's actually a Lightning Lane attraction if you've got Frozen-loving kids. This is also the land that is home to Star Tours. I know it doesn't seem like it should be, but Star Tours is technically part of Echo Lake as well. So, with a hodgepodge of a land, you guess you could say, what do you choose as your favorite thing? For me, it ultimately came down to two things, and both of them are shows. First one, for the first time in forever, a Frozen Sing Along Spectacular. The first time I went to this show, I had no idea what to expect, and I ended up laughing hysterically because the narrators who tell the story of Frozen are legit hilarious. And I'm talking adult joke, hilarious. They slip them in, they are fantastic, and they change what they say every show, so you never know when you're gonna start laughing. It is one of the most underrated things, I think, in this park, and a great attraction for not only your kids that love Frozen, but anybody who wants to sit down in the AC and be entertained for 30 minutes. The other one was Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. This show has been around almost as long as this park has, and it is so much fun. This is one of the last remnants of the original feel of this park when it was Disney MGM Studios. They're gonna do practical stunts right in front of your eyes, things like the rolling boulder scene while Indy tries to get the icon, dodging the different spears, stunt fighting, stunt falls. It is such a cool show. And again, it's like the last thing that's still here from MGM days, and I have a lot of fond, nostalgic memories. So who wins? In a fight between Elsa and Dr. Jones, who's winning? Ultimately for me, 
nostalgia wins this one. I remember seeing Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular from my very first visits as a kid to MGM Studios to being a cast member when I worked here. I used to come watch it with friends all the way up until recent visits. I just love this show. And it's one of the few things I feel like in this park particularly that's very heavy on thrill rides that your whole family will enjoy. I remember seeing this one as well as Lights, Motors, Action, which this kind of reminds me of, with everyone in my family, from my youngest cousins up to the grandparents, everyone had a good time. Not to mention the fact that Indiana Jones is an excellent film franchise, and when you hear that signature song, you cannot help but want to go aid Indy in his epic fight with Marion. Alongside Marion. He's not fighting Marion. That would be weird. I mean, like, he and Marion are a team, and they're fighting together against the bad guys. I wanted to make that clear. Although they do fight sometimes, but like in a bicker, loving way, not like a way. I've derailed. At the end of the day, as much as I love the Frozen show and I highly recommend it, especially in a park this busy and this packed uh, with this many heavy hitter attractions, it's a great filler to go get some AC and enjoy yourself and I promise you'll laugh. But for me, Indiana Jones take this one, so let's go see him. the Indiana Jones show. They weren't doing it today, but as a pro tip, sometimes Indy and Marion do like a little unofficial meet and greet down at the bottom right of the stage where you can take pictures with them. I saw the last show of the day today, so they'd probably like get me home, but keep an eye out because they may do that. Also, speaking of meet and greets, when I came out, the new Chippendale Rescue Ranger meet and greet was happening. Dale, you're so cute. Hi, Dale. Hi, Jim. I just saw the Indiana Jones show. Is he your inspiration for this look? You guys, the rescue rangers are out. You're doing more of a top sell it vibe. <laughs> you're the boulder. I get it now. I get it. You're running from the boulder. <laughs> So I met Chip and Dale in their really, really adorable outfits. Hollywood Studios has actually added a bunch of really cool characters recently. I saw Edna Mode when I was walking in. They've added the other Incredibles, including Frozone sometimes. They have added Max Goof dressed as Powerline. Like, kudos to studios right now. But we are done here in Echo Lake, and we're moving on to Grand Avenue. The heavy hitter at lands. I know, we're starting big. Welcome to Grand Avenue, folks. Now, this is a land in Hollywood Studios. This isn't going to be the last one where there's not a ton, and it's a land maybe some of you don't even know exists and probably just call it Muppet Land. But Grand Avenue used to be the mouthpiece to the streets of America, if anyone remembers those, where it was the forced perspective set pieces designed to look like New York City and San Francisco. You had the Lights, Motors, Action stunt show back there, and then you also had the Osborne spectacle of dancing lights at the holiday season. That was like my favorite thing ever. But now you just have Muppet Vision 3D, which I do love and made the shortlist for this land. You've got that 3D show starring Kermit Miss Piggy. Uh, you've got Mama Melrose, which is a full service Italian restaurant. You've got Pizza Rizzo, a quick service restaurant that serves Disney's legendarily terrible puffy pizzas. And honestly, the only nice thing I can say about Pizza Rizzo, besides the fact that it's Muppet themed, is the fact that the lights don't all work on the Pizza Rizzo sign. So at nighttime, instead of saying the city's top rated pizza, it says it's rat pizza. And I think that's funny. You have some of the best bathrooms in all of Hollywood Studios here at Gonzo's Royal Flush. Those are often not very crowded. Little pro tip for you right there. But that's kind of it here on Grand Avenue, except for one more thing, which I'm sure it's not going to be surprising to any of you, is the winner. You already know my favorite thing on Grand Avenue, 
baseline tap house. Now, what I will say is the addition of these characters I was just talking about made it a harder choice. I actually came in to meet Max a little early before I started filming this because I have yet to meet him in his Powerline costume. Here's the clip. How are you? I wore this shirt just for you. See it? And you're on the back too. And you're dancing. And you're dancing. Oh my God, you're so cute. <laughs> Isn't he so cute? Like what an awesome meet and greet addition. Goofy's there too in like a Hawaiian tropical number, but I just like could not get over how cute Max was. So if you want to know what time these characters are coming out, you can look in the My Disney Experience app. Search, for, I, this is like a crazy way to do it, but it's the only way I know how to do it. Search for wait times. And then when you get that list of wait times, go up to the top and click wait times and then click characters. And then you can filter by park and stuff. And then you can see which characters are in the park and what their set times are. And they may not show up because that means that character's not there that day, but you can see exact set times. Sometimes characters have like this time to this time because they're continuously out. And then sometimes they have very specific set times. So if you want to see Powerline Max, I fully encourage you to. He almost beat Baseline Tap House, but truly nothing beats Baseline Tap House. Baseline Tap House is one of my favorite little hidden gem oasises inside a theme park. It's a great place to grab a beer, grab a drink, grab a snack, and just relax and luxuriate for a little bit. They are known for having a variety of craft beers from California. It's all California themed. They've also got some wine on tap and some cocktails, some non-alcoholic drinks as well. And then they have a like standard bar. So if you want something like a Jack and Coke, they can probably do that as well. They've also got a couple of light bites. They've got a great big pretzel with beer, cheese, and mustard. They've got a steak puff that I'm a big fan of, but I had to get Molly's favorite things, which means, da 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 the charcuterie board. I love a charcuterie board. Now I almost got the pretzel, but ultimately my love of meat and cheese wins out. It's got a couple different salamis on here, some mustard, pickles, grapes, crostinis, blue cheese, kind of like a cheddar cheese, and then an herby goat cheese. This is one of my favorite charcuterie boards in Disney. It's only $12.50, which is pretty good for Disney prices. And then to take it up one step further to really make it Molly's favorite things, I got a beer flight, but not just any beer flight. I let the bartender pick my beers. As someone who loves exploring different flavors of craft beer um, and didn't have my heart set on any one, I said, these are the kind of beers I like, and then I let him pour them all for me. So if you are a more adventurous type person, if you wanna try some new beers, Talk to your bartenders and they'll uh, they'll have fun too. Rapid fire beer review, let's go. This is the Golden Road Brewing uh, Golden State Cerveza. So it's similar to a Corona and actually he said to me, I'm getting ready to pour your last beer. Would you rather have a Stella or a Corona? And I said a Corona because I'm part of the family. Ooh, and that does taste similar to a Corona. It tastes like the lime has already been added into it. Light, crisp, very refreshing for a hot day. I've had this one before, always a big fan. I know Dom only drinks Corona, but I think he might make an exception for that one. This is the Golden Road Hefeweizen. Oof, that's so good. You can taste the banana, you can taste the wheat. That's one of my go-tos if I am just gonna pick a singular beer. It's like a blue moon, but better. It's a little heavier than the last one, so it's harder to drink a full one, especially on a hot day. This is the Sierra Nevada Hazy Little Thing IPA. Ooh, that is crisp, that is light, that is not super hoppy, even though it's an IPA. It is definitely fruit forward. I'm really getting into fruity IPAs. I think it's thanks to that Jurassic Park IPA at Universal. You can taste the apricot, that is lovely. And last but not least, this is their seasonal IPA from Sierra Nevada. It looks like it is the Wonderland Nectarine Ale. Cheers, I've never had this. Ooh, and we have found a new favorite, friends. You can taste that nectarine forward. It's a little hoppy on the back end, but definitely the strongest beer I've had, but really refreshing and tastes wonderful on this warm night here in Hollywood Studios. Cheers. Gonna shove my face with the charcuterie. Now, if you want a full breakdown of this charcuterie board and the other best charcuterie boards at Disney World, Alan and I did a video where all we ate with charcuterie boards from this $12 one up to a $60 one, all over the place, some really unusual ingredients like a beef candle in one of them. So go check that video out when you're done with this one. Welcome to our next land, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, where the sky is so beautiful this evening here in Batu. Now, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, also often referred to as Star Wars Land, is the newest land here in Hollywood Studios. <laughs> Do I even need to keep going? Do I need to like hem and haw like I'm having a hard time making a decision of what the best thing in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is? No, right? We all know it's Rise. Yeah, we know it's Rise? Okay. Yes, obviously the best thing in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It's also my favorite thing in Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. This is the best attraction ever built in my opinion. 
and most people's opinion. <laughs> and, and so I know best doesn't equal favorite. I know that gets confusing sometimes, but objectively speaking, this is the most ambitious and best attraction ever built. It's multiple ride systems. It completely immerses you into the story of Star Wars. It's an over 20 minute experience. It's absolutely unbelievable. This attraction makes me cry every time I go on it, and I am very lucky in that I have been on it several times at this point. It is like nothing you've ever been on before. Now, I just hyped it up all that, and um, it is down right now for technical difficulties, which happens a lot, because when you build the most innovative and state-of-the-art attraction ever built, that does happen. So I'm not gonna be riding it right now, um, but luckily we've got lots of footage of it from past experiences, and truly, it is unlike anything else you've ever been on. And I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to best get on this attraction while I go get my second thing in Galaxy's Edge and talk about some of the other options on the way. Rise of the Resistance has a 44-0 inch height requirement and it's truly an incredible experience. Again, it's over in a 20 minute ride and it puts you through several different scenes with the Resistance as you are fighting against Kylo Ren. Currently, Rise of the Resistance is considered a fancy ride on Genie Plus, meaning if you'd like to skip the line, you're gonna have to pay an individual cost to do so. Fancy rides here in Walt Disney World are available to resort guests at 7 a.m., non-resort guests starting at the time the park opens, and they usually sell out pretty quickly after that 7 a.m. time open. So if you're a resort guest and you wanna ride this one, you're gonna to need to book it early. If you're not a resort guest, you are gonna to want to check as soon as the park opens. They will probably be sold out, but continue checking back throughout the day because I have gotten lucky at times where they've shown up at random times throughout the day and I've been able to skip the line. If you are not able to purchase a Lightning Lane, don't want to purchase a Lightning Lane, you're going to want to get here as early as possible, especially as a resort guest with that early park admission. Get here as early as you can, come in as soon as you can, head straight to Rise the Resistance. If you're not a resort guest and want to ride it, I still recommend getting here as soon as possible and getting straight in line. You may still wait an hour, but that's much better than the three plus hour line I saw earlier today. Additionally, if you are interested in the after hours events, they are an additional cost, especially you take an event where the park is open three extra hours. Uh, Alan and I did one recently. It was a walk-on. We could literally walk on Rise of the Resistance as many times as we wanted because there was no weighted line. So that's a great way to get some of these heavy hitter attractions done very quickly without a long line. Other great things in this land that I don't want to say they were a contender because nothing was a contender against Rise, but other great things to highlight in this land are Oga's Cantina. That's your local watering hole with DJ Rex spinning the beats. You're going to get some really fun out of this world cocktails like the Fuzzy Tauntaun. I really encourage anyone to go in there. It's kind of like a dive bar meets college bar vibe in there. It's a really good time. We've also got Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run, which while the attraction itself doesn't come close to my favorite, I really like the queue. And I don't think for a Star Wars fan, it gets much better than stepping foot aboard the Millennium Falcon because it looks just like the movies did. And it feels like you are truly stepping foot on the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. There are some popular eats here in Galaxy's Edge. You can try blue milk. You can get a Ronto wrap. But for me, there is only one thing that comes in second place to rise the resistance. Say hello to my favorite snack in Hollywood Studios, Cat Sacka's Outpost Mix. This is the signature mix from Cat Sacka's Kettle here in the marketplace. It is blueberry lemon pound cake popcorn mixed with chili lime popcorn. And let me tell you what, it tastes like spicy tricks. I'm obsessed with it. It's a little polarizing. Some people hate it. I'm obsessed with it. I'm like the number one fan of Cat Sacka's. And literally in a land if Rise of the Resistance didn't exist, this would be my number one pick. I'm sorry, but I am who I am. Truly though, I very much enjoy Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I often say that I'm a Galaxy's Edge fan more than I'm a Star Wars fan, because while I've seen the main chapters of the saga, I didn't grow up a Star Wars fan. I haven't watched a lot of the offshoot content like The Mandalorian, but I love being in Galaxy's Edge. I think it is so immersive. I think it is so fun. I think it's got some of the best rides anywhere and I think it's got some really great snacks so Galaxy's Edge is a should be a tough land to choose but when you've got something like Rise of the Resistance it makes it a lot easier. From the galaxy far far away to Andy's backyard we have made it to Toy Story Land. This is one of my favorite lands in Walt Disney World because Toy Story is my favorite Pixar film. Buzz Lightyear is my favorite Disney character, and I just think this land is the cutest. Now, I did time it so that we'd be in this land in the evening time because simply being in Andy's backyard after the sun goes down is one of my favorite things. Look how just alive and gorgeous this land is at night. You've got these Christmas lights that Andy's strung up. You've got Slinky Dog Dash Track lighting up. It's just really, really fun. And 
in a land that doesn't have pretty much any shade coverage, it's nice to be in here after it's a little bit cooler. Now, as a diehard Toy Story fan and Buzz Lightyear's number one fan girl, you may expect that I was going to pick the meet and greets to be my favorite thing in this land. This is where you can see the toy soldiers walk through, you can meet Woody and Buzz, Jesse, and I do love meeting Buzz Lightyear. Trust me, there's nothing like meeting your favorite character, and I adore seeing my buddy Buzz. But that's not what I picked. This is also the land that is home to Woody's Lunchbox, where you can get tachos, one of my favorite snacks in the theme park, the breakfast version or the regular version. These loaded tater tots are delicious. Woody's Lunchbox also has the Lunchbox tart, which is like a fancy pop tart, a great theme park snack, but I didn't pick Woody's Lunchbox either. We've also got alien swirling saucers. That wasn't really in the competition, although I do think it's an underrated fun family ride. And you've got Slinky Dog Dash, one of the most popular rides in all of Walt Disney World. This family coaster is so cute, and I have a lot of sentimental memories attached to it, specifically riding it with my nephew Paxton, who had so much fun that as soon as we got off, he started crying because he was sad it was over. And then a cast member made a little bit of magic for us and let just me and him go again. Out of the 12 people in my family, the cast member made a little bit of magic, which I really appreciated because up until that point, Paxton's older brother had gotten to do a lot more than he had, and it was nice to have something special just for Paxton. But I didn't pick Slinky Dog Dash either. My favorite thing in Toy Story Land, the OG ride, Toy Story Mania. Toy Story Mania is the original Toy Story ride in this section. Does anyone remember when the entrance was on the other side from where it was now in kind of that Pixar place area that eventually became Munisburg with the Incredibles and now is kind of just a nice place to enjoy a coffee? You guys remember that? Toy Story Mania is a 3D shooter style game. There's no height requirement and it is so much Fun. It features Woody, Buzz, Ham, Rex, so many of your favorite Disney characters as you've been shrunk down to the size of a toy and you're gonna go play different carnival games with the Toy Story characters. I love this attraction because one, everyone in the family can ride it, there's no height requirement. Two, it's fun no matter how many times you've been on it. This attraction's been around for a very long time at this point and I still get excited to ride it every single time because I'm trying to improve my score. I love the rewritability of game rides and the technology of this one holds up. It may not be a state of the art as something like Web Slingers or Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge over at Universal Studios Hollywood. It is still so much fun and it's been a popular attraction for decades and for good reason. Now, Toy Story Mania doesn't get as long of a line as something like Slinky Dog Dash and some of your attractions in Galaxy's Edge, so at times you can use this as a filler in between some of those busier lighting lanes. But it still will creep up over an hour at times, so it's a good attraction to book with Genie Plus after you've already done Slinky Dog Dash, Smuggler's Run, Tower of Terror, then you can start looking at booking your Toy Story Mania lightning lane. Now, Toy Story Mania does have some tips and tricks, so I'm gonna share them with you so that you can beat your friends and family and become the champion in your household. Number one, in the first room when you've got the barn scene, when you're doing the egg tossing with ham, try to hit the rat that runs up the side of the barn. It'll flip open the barn and there's gonna be a bunch of things worth a lot of points in there. In the next game with the dinosaurs, Trixie and Rex, you're gonna wanna hit all the squiggly volcano balloons because it'll make the volcano erupt and there's a bunch of high scoring balloons when it does so. In the next room, you're gonna have the green army men. You're gonna to wanna to work with your partner on this one. Both of you hit those plates they're throwing up at the same time. They're worth 2,000 each. You can hit them at the same time. A cannon's gonna come out and spit a lot of high scoring points at you. In the next room with Buzz and the aliens, try and get all of the aliens that are on the center console down at the same time and a big monster will come out and he will open his mouth and you can throw them in for easy quick points. And finally, in the very last game, when you've got things coming down the mine shaft, instead of shooting at your own target, both aim at the same one. It'll give your partner more points too, but it will also increase the value of the target faster, thus giving you more points. And this is one of those, you gotta do good for all in order to do good for you situations. I like to bet friends and family on the outcome of this game, maybe a drink, maybe a treat, whatever you want, but it's a lot of fun and I will never not be excited to ride Toy Story Mania. Headed back to the beginning at Hollywood Boulevard. Just got the notification that it's our turn. So we are headed there right now, kind of doing this a little out of order, but you know, when they call you, you gotta go. Hollywood Boulevard is your entrance land when you get into Disney's Hollywood Studios. This is the land that's gonna have all of your general services like guest relations, baby care, first aid, stroller and ECV and wheelchair rental. But there's also some fun to be seen on Hollywood Boulevard. This is also the land that's got a lot of great shopping. It's the land that's got the Trolley Car Cafe, AKA the Starbucks, definitely a hot contender. Hollywood Boulevard is also home to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, the newest attraction in the park. 
It's a family ride that puts you inside of a Mickey cartoon with a runaway train. I love Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. Certainly a top contender for the winner in this land. Hollywood Boulevard is also home to one of my underrated favorites, the projection shows on the Chinese theater every night. There are two shows, Disney Movie Magic and The Wonderful World of Animation. Disney Movie Magic focuses more on live action films such as Guardians of the Galaxy, Pirates of the Caribbean, Indiana Jones, and Wonderful World of Animation has clips from every full-length Disney and Pixar film celebrating the many, many years of animation this company has had. You've also got some great characters that have started to pop up here on Hollywood Boulevard. Just a few hours ago, I saw Edna Mode come out. And Hollywood Boulevard is home to the signature restaurant of this park, the Hollywood Brown Derby, which I love. Hollywood Brown Derby, again, signature restaurant known for things like their steak, known for their Cobb salad. But the Hollywood Brown Derby also has the lounge where you can luxuriate outside, enjoy a great cocktail, order off the menu, or some bar bites. And that's where things get tough for me. You see, I am deeply passionate about two things on Hollywood Boulevard, which isn't always the case on these kind of starter lands when you get into the parks. In other parks, the first land is kind of just maybe a few shops, maybe coffee. But that's not the case here in Hollywood. In Hollywood Studios, I am very torn between Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and the Brown Derby Lounge. I love Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. I think it gets a bad rep here in this park because it took the place of Great Movie Ride, which so many people were so fond of. But at the end of the day, it's a really, really cute dark ride. It's got that trackless technology. It was long overdue for Mickey and Minnie to get their own attraction. Tons of Easter eggs, tons of hidden Mickeys, a catchy tune. It's a great family ride and a much needed addition to this park that's so full of thrill rides. But on the other hand, Brown Derby Lounge is one of my favorite places to luxuriate. The Cobb Salad is one of my favorite meals in all of Walt Disney World. And in a busy park, is there anything better than sitting back with your family and friends with a great cocktail and a great meal? These so are two very different directions I could go in, but ultimately, there was one answer. If you think I picked Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, the newest attraction in this park, I'm sorry. You're wrong. I picked the Brown Derby Lounge. This was truly the hardest decision of any land because I love both of these things so much. I truly love Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I think it's a wonderful attraction in this park. I highly recommend it to anyone coming. And again, if I was doing a list of like the top X must-dos in this park, that would be very high on the list. But unfortunately, luxuriating with one of my favorite meals and having a great cocktail is higher. Say hello, friends, to the Brown Derby Cobb Salad. This is a signature recipe, and it is the same recipe as the Brown Derby out in Hollywood, California. Legend has it this was made up by a chef whose last name was Cobb when a very famous journalist came in late night. He'd had some dental work, so he couldn't chew anything too much. So he, the chef finally chopped up a bunch of ingredients they had in the kitchen, and thus the Cobb Salad is born. It has turkey, bacon, egg, tomatoes, blue cheese, avocado, and classic dressing. Uh, you can have it as is. You can have it without some of these things. You can also add chicken or shrimp for an upcharge. I like to get it just as is. If you eat it inside the restaurant, they'll mix it table side for you. I'm also enjoying one of their signature cocktails. This is the pomegranate martini. It's got absolute citron, stirrings pomegranate liqueur, and cranberry juice. If you know me, you know I love a cocktail, but I do not like a sweet cocktail. And this is a perfect uh, mixture of a little bit of tart, but it's still fancy. Old fashions are my drink of choice. However, when I'm at the Brown Derby and Brown Derby Lounge, sometimes I like to do a martini because it just feels right. A very fun thing to order here is they do have a martini and a margarita flight. If you would like to try a few of their signature beverages, they give you smaller pours of three different margaritas or three different martinis. You can try a little bit. I had that recently and I'm a big fan of that as well, but I love just a classic cocktail. It feels so fancy in this glass. I feel like we're in old Hollywood friends. Oh, and it's always made so well. It definitely tastes like alcohol. It's definitely a martini, but it's not as strong flavor-wise as a regular martini, which is just all alcohol. So again, you have to kind of like a Cosmo to enjoy it. This is their play on it, and it's delicious. Now coming to the Brown Derby Lounge, you can order off the entire Brown Derby menu. So if you'd like to eat a steak while you're sitting out here, go ahead. They also do have some light bites on their menu, including a charcuterie board, some sliders, but this is truly just a great place to sit back and relax. There's great people watching here. 
And this is, as I've said, a park that gets very busy with very long lines. There's tons of e-ticket heavy hitter attractions here, and it's nice to just enjoy a good meal sitting with your friends and family. That is part of what theme parks are all about, in my opinion. Do note, you cannot make reservations for the Brown Derby Lounge, but when I said we had a date here earlier, that's because I joined the walk-up waitlist. The walk-up waitlist is available in the My Disney Experience app, and it allows you to put your name on a list at various restaurants and lounges, and then enjoy your day throughout the park, and they'll text you when they're ready. So you can do that. If it's not available, keep checking back and you'll usually be able to get a spot. I think it's a great service that allows you to still go have fun doing other things in the park. Uh, if you're not going to show up, make sure you decline or cancel out of the wait list so that you don't take up a spot from someone else. But cheers. I know it's just a salad, but it's an awesome salad. Salads always taste better when you eat them out. It's so finely chopped, which I love. I love the classic dressing. It's kind of a French vinaigrette based dressing. Got a little zing from that blue cheese. Always fresh vegetables and fresh produce. This is one of my favorite things in Disney World, I'm, and I want to apologize. Belly full of a delicious salad and a tasty cocktail. We're kind of backtracking now, or sidetracking, I guess, to Animation Courtyard. This is, of the three remaining lands we have to talk about, the next two are like kind of odd. And by odd, I mean, I feel like nobody thinks of them really as lands. Like when you think of Hollywood Studios, you probably immediately think of Galaxy's Edge, of Sunset Boulevard, of Toy Story Land, and then just like the rest of the park. And the rest of the park is divided into some lands, including the one we're in right now, Animation Courtyard. Now, Animation Courtyard is this courtyard area, and then it extends down this way just a little bit, kind of to the entrance of Toy Story Land. In this courtyard area, you've got Voyage of the Little Mermaid, which prior to the closure was about a 20 minute stage show retelling of the Little Mermaid. Now, despite the giant Ursula puppet, which terrifies me, I always enjoyed the show. It's been around for a long time. It's one I remember seeing as a kid. The puppeteering is amazing. And even I, with a fear of Ursula, cannot deny how amazing the music is to Little Mermaid. But this has not reopened for many years now. So if they reopen this and it's gonna be like a live action Little Mermaid, I may change my tune about what's the best thing in this land, particularly if they get rid of giant Ursula. But in all seriousness, even if they reopen it the way it was, this would be a contender because I love a live production and I do enjoy the music from The Little Mermaid. However, it's not open right now, so it's not even on my list for contenders. What is on the list? Potentially, not the short list, it's just on the overall list, Disney Junior Dance Party. This is a very cute, about 15 or so minute show featuring a lot of your favorite Disney Junior characters. I'm talking Mickey from Mickey and the Roadster Racers, Timon from The Lion Guard, Vampirina, Doc McStuffins. If you've got preschool age kids who like these characters, it's a very fun show. There's not seats in it, so the kids can jump up and down and there's like bubbles and interactivity. It's a very, very cute show. There's also meet and greets right here outside of the theater with a lot of the Disney Junior characters. So if you've got, again, little kids, this is a great area for you. But it doesn't make the list for Molly's favorite things. That'd be weird, right? If, if I was like, my favorite thing in this land is Fancy Nancy. 34-year-old adult, child-free by choice, but I just love Fancy Nancy. Be a little weird. I'm not here to yuck your yums, but I'm just saying when I go to the show to film it for different things, I feel like a creep. So, Also in the courtyard, Star Wars Launch Bay. This has several different experiences within the building. You've got a short movie that rotates about either the fandom or some of the making of Star Wars. I haven't seen that recently, so I don't know which one it is or if it's even open, because last time I was in here it wasn't. It's also got props from the Star Wars saga. Some are replicas, some were actually screen used, so that's really cool. But the coolest thing inside Star Wars Launch Bay, I would say, are the meet and greets. This is where you can meet Chewbacca, although he is also in Galaxy's Edge, BB-8, the droid, and most importantly, Darth Vader. I would say meeting Darth Vader does make it to my short list of things for this land. I didn't grow up a huge Star Wars fan, but no one can deny that Darth Vader is one of the best movie villains of all time, and his meet and greet is incredibly cool. It's incredibly intimidating because he's very tall and very scary, um, but it's one of the best meet and greets. In fact, the last time I did this meet and greet, I think the dad behind me was going to cry. He was so excited. So this is like the one meet and greet that if you feel like you're too cool for meet and greet um, or you're not really into meeting characters, I feel like Darth Vader is the one that gets everybody hyped. So meeting Darth Vader does make it to my shortlist for this land. But it's not quite the winner. I'm just saying if they go live action Little Mermaid and whoever they cast sounds half as good as Halle Bailey does in those trailers, 
let me change my tune about the Little Mermaid. However, when I looked on the map and realized that this was considered part of Animation Courtyard, it was no contest. Even in a land that has a jaw fruit with my beloved shaky Jamaica, Walt Disney Presents and One Man's Dream trump it all. Walt Disney Presents is a walkthrough exhibit all about the man behind all of this magic, Walt Disney. It features images from Walt's childhood, it features props, it features artifacts, it features examples of things such as the multi-plane camera which the Disney company invented, the start of Mickey, it usually features some kind of whatever the next thing the Disney company is working on, it has animatronics that have existed over the years. As a Disney history nerd, to me it is important to understand that all of this was dreamt up by a man. It wasn't just a company, and I think a lot of people think of Disney as just a company name, but it was a person's name. It was two persons name, Walt and Roy, Walt being the creative, Roy being the financial genius behind all of this magic. And not enough people, in my opinion, realize that there's a real person behind all of this and the impact that Disney Company had on not just theme parks, but entertainment in general. Did you know surround sound was invented by the Disney Company? Yeah, they invented it for Fantasia and they called it Fantasound, but it was the predecessor to surround sound as we know it today. So we're gonna head into Walt Disney Presents, take a quick little look-see uh, and talk about a little bit more about what's in this exhibit. Now there can be a little confusion with this exhibit, whether it's called Walt Disney Presents or One Man's Dream. The exhibit itself is called Walt Disney Presents and then One Man's Dream is the film that they show. Sometimes One Man's Dream is not playing and instead they're playing like an extended trailer or a preview of an upcoming Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars film. But right now they are playing One Man's Dream, which is a short film about Walt Disney narrated by Julie Andrews. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Brings a tear to my eye if you've got a minute, uh, want to sit down and enjoy, I highly recommend it. But otherwise, just walk through the exhibit. It's absolutely beautiful. Starts with these gorgeous photos of Walt Disney. One thing I do want to point out that I find like a little wild is that they um, photoshopped out Walt's accessory here. I'm sure some of you know what it is. Unfortunately, Walt Disney was a pretty heavy smoker and he actually passed away from lung cancer. So. I think it's odd that they photoshopped out his cigarette. Like, I understand smoking is bad, and we know that now, but this was in probably, let's see, what are they working on? Pinocchio? That's in the 30s and 40s. Just something interesting, I like to point out. A little tidbit, a little fun fact, you know, a little fun fact. Um, but when you walk through this exhibit, you're going to see different things. Like, right here is a model of Main Street USA in Disneyland, which Walt Disney modeled after his boyhood home of Marceline, Missouri. That was kind of the inspiration, although he wanted it to be any town USA at the turn of the century. There's also interactive exhibits like this with an early drawing of Mickey Mouse come to life before your eyes. Here is one of my two favorite things inside this land. It's a model of the multi-plane camera, which is technology that Disney invented um, to make animation look better and look realistic. So if you look right here, you've got a scene from the old mill, and if different pieces of the scene are on these different things. So you've got the mill right here, you've got a little bit of the swamp right here, you've got the spider web right here, and more of the swamp right here. And then when you layer them all together, it gives you the illusion that it's 3D, even though it's 2D animation. Absolutely incredible technology that the Disney company came up with and fully changed the way movies are made. Of course, if we're going to talk about Walt Disney, we got to talk about Disneyland. So there's this gorgeous model here of Disneyland's Cinderella Castle. There's some of the original concept art here on the wall drawn by Irv Ryman. Uh, it talks about things like them promoting it on ABC with the wonderful world of Disney. For more Disney history nerddom, I <laughs> did an hour and a half video touring Disneyland telling all kinds of secrets, details, backstories, history of the Disney company. So check that out if that's up your alley like it is mine. You've got original props here from Annette Fudicello and the Mickey Mouse Club. But my second favorite thing in this exhibit is right over here where we have part of an animatronic from Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln from the 1964-65 World's Fair. Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln was a dream of Walt Disney's. He actually thought of Hall of Presidents before it existed, but they didn't have the technology at the time. So for the World's Fair, they ended up doing Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, sponsored in part by the state of Illinois, um, because Walt Disney was born in Chicago and his favorite president was Abraham Lincoln. So if you take a look at the technology inside an animatronic, it's absolutely incredible. Sorry, Mr. Lincoln, I know you're naked, but absolutely amazing and then come over here and look at the programming console this is how they programmed the original human animatronics like because of great moments with mr lincoln we have hall of presidents we have haunted mansion we have pirates of the caribbean we have the shaman of song we have hondo naka and kylo ren like this is so important to disney history it kind of like gives me chills that it's just here 
in an exhibit in Hollywood Studios that literally nobody else is looking at. And the final scenes of the exhibit swap out with whatever the newest and the latest and greatest Disney's working on is. Currently they have a little Disney Wish exhibit. Um, so it's got some of the sculptures for different things that they used to bring the Wish to life at long last. Uh, we finally sailed on the Wish a couple of weeks ago. We've got the video series out for that if you wanna check out the Disney Wish. Um, but they tend to rotate that with whatever is new. They've had Star Cruiser stuff in here before. So looking forward to see whatever's next. I'm also excited because they swap out the movie prop section, which is at the end. I've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, I've seen Descendants, and currently they have props from National Treasure at the Disney Plus show. And I've also found some costumes from the Zombies series, which I've never seen, but will eventually get to um, because of our podcast, See This Lapidus, where we watch every Disney Channel original movie. If you're not listening already, check it out. Uh, and they also have some costumes from the Disney Plus show Willow, including Warwick Davis's outfit, which I understand that he's Willow, but to me, he's Professor Flitwick. So if you're a pop culture fan, you may want to pop in here because you never know what costumes and props you'll find. Welcome, friends to what I have to say is the hardest land to choose something in here in Hollywood Studios. And not hard because there's so many outstanding choices that I'm just overwhelmed and I don't know what to do because they're all so great. Now, overwhelming because on the map there's only three things listed in this land and none of which are like bright shining beacons of things that I would put on a top list of Hollywood Studios. To start, you've got the Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater, which to its credit, I loved as a kid, and I do feel like it's a Disney rite of passage. This is that restaurant that feels like you're in the 1950s in a drive-in car. It serves burgers and milkshakes. They're perfectly fine, but what you're paying for is the atmosphere because it plays B-horror films on the screen. It plays old Disney advertisements with Walt himself. It plays like the old like hot dog jumping into a bun uh, refreshment commercial that maybe you saw in Greece if you're like me for the first time. This is a Disney Rite of Passage. It's not somewhere I go often, but I remember going growing up and absolutely loving it. Next up, you've got Mickey and Minnie starring in Red Carpet Dreams. This is your Mickey and Minnie meet and greet here in Hollywood Studios. You're gonna meet them as they are making their dreams come true. Mickey of being the Sorcerer's Apprentice, Minnie of being a movie star. So they're in very cute outfits. The problem with Mickey and Minnie and Red Carpet Dreams is that there's no lightning lane. Well, there used to be, but there isn't anymore. And the line gets very, very long. The entire time I've been in the park, it's been at least a 55 zero minute wait, if not longer. And while I love meeting Mickey and Minnie, I have a hard time waiting in an hour long line knowing that you can get a lightning lane for Mickey and Minnie at Animal Kingdom or at Magic Kingdom or he's got a very short line typically over at Epcot in the Imagination Pavilion. The last thing listed on Commissary Lane is ABC Commissary. This is a quick service restaurant. I will give credit where credit is due. ABC Commissary has upped their game quite a bit since the parks reopened and revamped their entire menu. The buffalo chicken grilled cheese is too often slept on and it is a very good sandwich. They've also got tacos, bowls, burgers. I think they've really improved and it is a good indoor quick service restaurant if you're looking for something uh, to eat inside. However, when I thought about what my favorite thing truly is, what's the thing I do the most on Commissary Lane? I, I had one answer and it's probably not what you're expecting. It's these restrooms. I know, we're, yeah, we're here. That's what we're doing. These are one of the best, if not the best restrooms in Hollywood Studios. Now I know I shouted out Gonzo's Royal Flush earlier and I do stand by that, but Gonzo's Royal Flush is only really convenient to half the park. These are very centrally located. They're located kind of in between three lands. So I don't know which one they technically belong in because the map doesn't list which land restrooms are in. It just notates them on the map. So they're in between Commissary Lane. Most of the building itself is seated on Commissary Lane, but they're also attached to the Hyperion Theater, which is where Frozen takes place, which we already talked about is technically in Echo Lake. And they're also right across from Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which is technically Hollywood Boulevard. So I'm going to make a case for being on Commissary Lane because the majority of the building does sit on Commissary Lane and oftentimes that happens with buildings. Think about the Columbia Harbor House. It's listed as a Liberty Square building in Magic Kingdom, but it technically also goes into Fantasyland. So these restrooms, no one's ever in them. You're welcome. I'm spilling my best secrets right now. They're typically clean. The only time they get a little crowded is if a Frozen show just dumps, but even then these are one of the best kept secrets in Hollywood Studios. In a world where you do not accept me claiming those restrooms as a part of Commissary Lane, it's honestly a coin flip for one of the other three. I could argue any of the other three. Obviously, I like meeting Mickey and Minnie. I don't like that there's no lightning lane and that you'd have to wait in probably about an hour long line to do so. I like that buffalo chicken sandwich at ABC Commissary quite a bit. I think it's very good, but I wouldn't pick it over several other things in the park, including Brown Derby Lounge or Baseline. 
and I enjoyed going to Sci-Fi Dino Theater as a kid. I think it's part of the Disney Rite of Passage, but it's not something I'm actively seeking out to do frequently. As of right now, I'd probably give the nod to Sci-Fi just for nostalgia reasons, because I remember going there a lot as a kid, and I like a milkshake and a burger. But honestly, it just truly depends on the day which one my answer would be. So for now, I'm saying the bathrooms. And that brings us to our final land here in Hollywood Studios, Sunset Boulevard. This was the biggest addition to Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios opened in 1989. And this is the hardest land to choose because of good things. It's like the opposite problem of ABC Commissary. Sunset Boulevard is home to two of the most popular attractions in Walt Disney World. Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith and Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Do note, Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith is under a temporary refurbishment for a few weeks at the time of filming this. Always make sure to check the refurbishment calendar before you book a trip because you want to make sure your favorite ride isn't under a scheduled refurbishment if it's going to make or break your trip. But Rock and Roller Coaster is that amazing coaster, 48 inch height requirement, 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds, different Aerosmith tracks as you zoom around, three inversions, the only roller coaster in Walt Disney World to go upside down. The only thing that would make it better IMO as if Don't Want to Miss a Thing from the Armageddon soundtrack was one of the soundtrack options. Looming over Sunset Boulevard is the fan favorite Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. This is one of the best Imagineered attractions in all of Walt Disney World. It's 199 feet tall and it takes you down those 13 stories into the Twilight Zone in one of the best themed attractions there's ever been. The queue is absolutely incredible. The storytelling is absolutely incredible. This is some people's favorite ride in all of Walt Disney World, and I don't blame them. It is a masterpiece. Not as obvious, but I do want to call out that Hollywood Boulevard is also home to Beauty and the Beast live on stage. The retelling of the Beauty and the Beast story, a low-key favorite of mine because I love a live theater production. Sunset Boulevard is also home to the best shopping in the park, including one of my favorites, Legends of Hollywood, that tends to sell some of the higher items like the Dune and Burke purses, the Alex and Ani, the, the dress shop dresses, bunch of ears and cute clothing collections. So I love that store. I also should highlight that Hollywood Boulevard is home to Lightning McQueen Racing Academy, which is a cute filler attraction if you've got somebody that likes cars. But notably for most people, it has a cool Lightning McQueen animatronic. Sunset is also home to Sunset Market Ranch, which includes these various dining stalls. Hollywood Scoops the Ice Cream Shop, Fairfax Fair, which does gourmet hot dogs, Catalina Eddie's, which does puffy circle pizzas, Rosie's All-American Cafe, which does burgers and such. Uh, there's also the fruit market that sells some snacks and the bar. So there's a few dining options here, but let's be honest. None of the most recent things I mentioned are even in the race. The race for Sunset Boulevard comes down to three things, Rock and Roller Coaster, Tower of Terror, and the winner. Do you know what the winner is? If you knew the winner was Fantasmic, congratulations. You're right, 10 imaginary points to you. I'd say to your house, but I'm in the wrong place for that. Instead, the points are made up and the score doesn't matter like the show Whose Line Is It Anyway. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? It, it does have a Hollywood Studios connection because it was hosted by Drew Carey, who used to have an attraction here. I'm getting derailed because we are talking about Fantasmic. Absolutely no questions asked. My favorite thing in this land. I know I started this land's pitch by saying it was a hard one to choose, but I was kind of lying to you. It was Fantasmic easily the whole way. Listen, I love Tower of Terror. I think Tower of Terror is incredible. The detail in that queue specifically are amazing. When you learn about all the Easter eggs and fun facts that go with that attraction, which you can do in our secret series at Hollywood Studios, um, you will be even more blown away than you probably already are. But for me, Fantasmic is not only my favorite thing in this land, it's my favorite thing in all of Hollywood Studios and one of my favorite things in all of Walt Disney World. It is my favorite nighttime spectacular and it is such an incredible show. It's about a 30 minute stage show. It's got live productions, it's got fireworks, it's got characters, it's got music, it's got water effects, and it stars Mickey Mouse, your friend and mine, trying to stop the powers of his imagination, which of course start lovely and beautiful with our friends, the princesses and Aladdin. And then things 
get a little dicey when the villains get involved. And Mickey has to decide if the power of his imagination is enough to stop the forces of evil. And I'm going to cry just thinking about this show because it is so wonderful and it is so magical and it is what Disney magic is truly about. Not only is it technologically just so wonderful when you see all the different effects, especially having it come back from refurbishment with brand new scenes starring characters that have never been in it before like Mulan and Moana and Elsa and Aladdin, but it is just the most beautiful show. It makes me cry every single time when Mickey appears up on the mountain at the end of the show conducting the fireworks because he made the bad guys go away and his imagination is the most powerful thing and all the wonderful things happen. Like, it's just Disney magic at its core. So it was an easy choice. Seeing Fantasmic is the perfect way to end your day in Hollywood Studios, and it's the perfect way to end this video. So let's go see Mickey. Now, Fantasmic is incredibly popular, and there are not currently lightning lanes available at Fantasmic. If you don't want to wait in line, the only way to do so currently is by booking a dining package, which gets you a meal at one of the sit-down restaurants in the park, and then a reserved seating voucher. It is an expensive way to skip the line, but if you want to guarantee you've got a good seat, it is the way to do it. Currently, Fantasmic is usually running two shows, and if that's the case, the later show is usually the least crowded. I've had great success showing up like 20 minutes early and getting a seat for Fantasmic and the later show. Now, if you want the best seat in the house, you're gonna wanna get there early. If you've got younger kids, you wanna get there early for the original show. I would say if you're going to the first show on a busy day, you wanna get in line at least an hour early. But I promise you, the show is worth it. It is just quintessential Disney magic, and that's the best way I can describe it. Well, friends, that is a wrap on Molly's favorite things here in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Which of my choices surprised you the most? What's your favorite thing in Hollywood Studios? Definitely let us know down in the comments. What park should I cover next? Let us know that as well. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, and until next time, I'm Molly, and it's been so magical. Now go watch the Hollywood Studios Secrets video. Bye.